Jordan stops by to give my keys and vehicle back to me. He knocks and walks in the front door. Hey, Thomas. How'd it go last night? Oh, brought us some drinks. Holding up a 12-pack and a smile. I look at him, frustrated. Why the hell did you leave me last night? Tossing my keys to me. Relax, man. When you went to the bathroom, I told that girl you wanted to talk to her, but <laughs> you were too shy, he says. Oh, I don't know. I'm worried. <laughs> it went really well, actually. Perhaps too well, even. Still waiting to hear back from the captain about her. I say, with a concerned look on my face. Anyway, enough about her. Let's get serious. That big bastard we saw last night makes the rest of these guys we killed look like Boy Scouts. I explain everything Alvarez sent me about the shot caller, and turn my laptop around, pointing to the pictures of the grotesque murder scenes. This is the carnage these savages leave behind. Senseless violence and murder. They attack at random, kidnapping, torture, and eventually dismembering innocent bystanders, leaving their body parts in public parks with absolutely no regard for human life, I say, enraged. Jordan, examining the pictures, sickened, covering his mouth. Scrolling down further and further, I notice his demeanor is changing rapidly. He closes the laptop furiously. Clearly bothered by what he's just seen, he looks up at me and speaks. Oh, they're sending a message. Puzzled, I inquire, asking, What message is that? still holding the case of beer, which he no longer has interest in, places it on the table and sits down. These gangbangers are saying that it's their town, and they can kill and terrorize neighborhoods as they please, from one victim to the next. No remorse, no conscience. Truly terrifying, he continues. Well, let's send him a message right back, I urge. These public officials won't act, and we need to assure the general public they can feel safe walking down the street with their families, leaving home to buy a gallon of milk without fearing for their lives. How do you plan to do that? Jordan asks, seemingly interested. Simple. We make an example of these lowlife scum, humiliating them out in the open for everyone to see, displaying banners overhead the dead bodies of the criminals we kill, reading... Violent crimes will go unnoticed and unpunished no longer. Yeah, that'll definitely get their attention, I exclaim. Jordan thinks for a moment, glancing in my direction. Yeah, I'm just not sure that's the kind of attention we want to draw. Besides, shouldn't we stay low profile? Seems like a sure way to get caught, he says. Yeah, maybe you're right. I sigh. But well, we must do something. I want to take these guys out before they hurt anyone else, I tell him, very frustrated. Assuring me we'll get them, he explains we must keep our composure and be rational. Being well organized and prepared is key. Our emotions cannot get in the way of our planning and execution, or we will certainly be caught. I nod and agree. Yeah, let's just cool off and enjoy those drinks, and then we can begin the process. After watching a few movies and downing the 12-pack, my place is now a mess. Food boxes and little Debbie wrappers are everywhere. Beer cans cover the coffee table. Damn it, Jordan. Help me clean up your sorry excuse for a human being. He walks by, smacking me over the back of my head then begins picking up the array of trash littered about. Grabs his things and heads out the door. I'll get a lift driver to take me back to my place. Then I'll start following Cortez. I'll check in with you later, he says. I follow him outside to my Toyota, unlocking it and grabbing the rest of my weapons and gathering other supplies. We live in an open carry state, which essentially means... You aren't required to have a concealed weapons permit to carry a firearm, and can openly holster most any guns. 
even carrying them into businesses and parks. Well, unless it's a federal building, or a certain business that has signs posted strictly prohibiting it. I say this because I carry wherever I go. Sometimes concealed, sometimes open. While still outside, I hear loud music coming from a vehicle and turn to see this car slowly passing by with four men staring at me. One of them pointing, speaking inaudibly. On this particular day, I have my concealed holster on me and my oh-so-precious Beretta, which I will from now on refer to as Samantha. <laughs> yes, I name my weapons. Noticing the men are acting strange, or perhaps I'm just being judgmental, I reach behind on my lower back and turn off the safety while gripping the handle, readying myself in case they make any sudden moves. More talking amongst the men takes place, and I see one of them noticeably shaking his head in a no fashion. The men drive off. Me, now relieved, not wanting a gunfight in my own neighborhood, especially one that's so completely unprovoked. I haven't seen them before, but perhaps I will see them again soon. I take down the number plate just in case, head towards my apartment. Going up the stairs and walking through the door, immediately engaging all the locks. Relaxing on the couch, going over all these sickening pictures of the deceased victims on my laptop, I hear from the captain. My phone rings. Hey Tom. Did you get the files I sent you? He asks. Yeah, I'm looking at them now. Hey, did you find anything out about the name I gave you? I ask with a worried tone of voice. In fact, I did. Let's see here. Miranda Jones, 28 years old, college graduate, works at the county hospital, full-time employee, registered nurse at the ER, two moving violations, speeding tickets. No arrests. Why? Who is she? He says with a growly voice. Oh, this nice girl I met. Wanted to get some info on her. It seemed too perfect. I felt off about it. I explain. Well, kid, one thing to learn in life, that if something looks too good to be true, it prop... I cut him off. Yeah, yeah, I know. Thanks for checking for me. I reply. Listen, the reason I called is something big is happening. I sat in a briefing this morning. It seems the FBI has brought in one of their top agents. He's a veteran. He absolved many high-profile cases involving well-known serial killers. They're investigating these recent murders and are trying to find evidence to build a case. Even looking for patterns in the murders. The FBI isn't sharing all of their files with us. So, at the moment, we aren't sure how much they know. I'm going to try to steer their investigation in a different route. Planning evidence, hair, fingerprints, whatever I have to. So they're focused on some worthless gangbangers instead of potentially us. They could be getting close. For now, hold off on killing the big man Cortez until I can reduce the heat. <laughs> Talk to you later, kid. He hangs up abruptly. Several days pass. I stay home playing video games, generally keeping to myself. Miranda came over a few nights after work. We spent some quality time together, watching movies and talking, getting to know one another. Of course, I am cautious in my words with her. She is so good to me. Oh, I find myself afraid to really let her into my world. Oh, if she knew what I really was. I follow her into the kitchen. Damn, she really seems to enjoy cooking for me. Things are going well with us. She stays the night. Laying on the couch, she's now out like a light. It's late and my phone rings loudly. Jordan, what's up, man? You okay? I ask. Frantically, he begins to speak his words faintly, with heavy breathing. He's running. 
I can hear rustling in the background and wind blowing from his movements. They're after me, man. Hold on, I'm hiding. He begins whispering. Shit. I thought they didn't see me. Damn, I was being careful. Even watching from a distance. I've been following the big man for a few days now. Somehow they spotted me. I hear them coming. Just then I hear multiple men shouting while speaking Spanish. From what I could understand, they said to find and kill him. Loud shots ringing out. I hear the phone falling to the ground and Jordan shouting while shooting back at them. His voice muffled by the gun blasts. Jordan, are you okay? What happened? I yell into the phone. Four more gunshots are heard very close to the phone. I hear grunting and slow movement. Footsteps approaching and more chattering. Voices getting louder with every step. Talk to me, Jordan. Damn it, man. Are you hit? Where are you? I cry out. Hearing the phone being picked up, a Hispanic man's voice is clearly heard. Your little friend is dead. He tried to mess with our business. He fucked with the wrong homies. The phone line goes dead. Completely speechless, I drop my phone on the floor. In a rage, I begin destroying my apartment, yelling at the top of my lungs, throwing lamps, flipping over furniture, spiraling out of control and into madness, simply tearing the whole world apart. I was so loud my neighbor comes over to check on me, worried I was being robbed or attacked. After a few moments, I slowly calm down as my back hits the wall and I slide down to the floor. The anger subsiding, turning to sadness. I'm now crying. A depression hits me immediately. I go into a dark place in my mind. My judgment clouded by waves of emotion and rage. It's been weeks now. I barely leave the house. I haven't seen or spoken to anyone in a while. Devastated by the loss of my best friend. Wondering if it's even worth it anymore. My health is deteriorating. I don't eat right. Booze all day and night. It's really taking a toll on my body. Stopped exercising entirely. All I can think about is Jordan. He's been gone a while now. But I still see him sometimes. In the corner of my eyes. He dissipates quickly. Some nights I wake up from a horrible dream. I call out, yelling Jordan's name. Even though I know it really isn't him. Nightmares haunt me. Losing hope and just wanting to give up altogether. Which is not in my nature at all. This has hit me harder than I could ever have imagined. Sitting on my couch, feeling sorry for myself. There's a knock on my door. Hey, Frank. I still haven't told him my real name. Why won't you answer your phone? Open up, I want to talk. Slowly I arise from my sorrow and walk towards the door, turning around to look at my apartment, which is a complete mess. So am I. Answering the door in a daze, face pale, sleep deprived and looking extremely disheveled. Oh my God, what the hell happened to you? Miranda asks with a worried expression on her face. She pushes me aside, letting herself in, heading to the kitchen, making me a glass of water and grabbing meds from her purse. Here, take this, she insists, forcing the drugs on me. I accept them and begin gulping the water down. Now, talk to me. Why have you been so distant? I've been explaining everything that happened to Jordan and how I basically shut down mentally and emotionally. She embraces me and holds me tightly for minutes, starts crying, telling me how sorry she was. Feeling dead inside, I say, with a cold, blank expression, I think you should go. Now is a really bad time. She refuses, putting her purse down. 
No, you look horrible. I'm going to stay right here. I have some vacation saved up. I'll call in from work for a few days. And so, she does. Slowly nursing me back to health. Each day, I start feeling more and more like myself again. Whole almost. Truly amazed, I can't believe the effect she has on me. It's incredible. Can psychopaths genuinely fall in love? The only thing that would feel even better is to seek vengeance for my fallen comrade. Jordan, I will avenge your death. For those of you responsible for his murder in cold blood, my life is now dedicated to your demise. Each day I will hunt them down. Their blood will rain down from the skies. Your deaths will be slow and painful. I will not rest until each one of you feels true agony. The worst hell imaginable. Yes, you will suffer my wrath. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay?